I look for a severe recession in the U.S. Um, really global because you, you know your question was how's the global outlook is pretty bad. Um, maybe something closer to you know social unrest and riots in Europe, um, and then on top of that, possibly a global financial liquidity crisis worse than 2008. Our economy, you know, so we had negative growth in the first quarter and the second quarter of 2022. Two back-to-back -back quarters of declining GDP meets the kind of rule of thumb definition of a recession. Nobody wants to use the R word. They're they're all hiding behind the National Bureau of Economic Research, which is the unofficial official arbiter of recessions and recoveries. We'll see what they say. Typically, the the National Bureau of Economic Research declares a recession. The beginning of recession after it's already over it's like thanks we've been through it thanks for letting us know we just had a recession they'll probably come out and say something next year who knows but um but if it was a recession it, it, it kind of looks like one it was very mild granted growth in the third quarter was a lot stronger 2.6 percent but when you dissect that what you see is that um that was almost 100 percent driven by net exports when was the last time the United States had positive GDP driven by net exports? Probably 1959. I mean, that's we're we're, we're that's typically a drag on growth, and we we run a, been running trade deficits forever. Uh, but there it was. Um, that meant that people were still buying U.S. goods, but the U.S. we were not buying as much from other people. That's indi indicative of a slowdown. Consumption was weak, private investment was weak, inventories were weak. Those are the real drivers of the economy and they were all weak, so okay, net exports. That's not sustainable, so I would look for a recession, a more severe recession to begin in the fourth quarter. That's one, you know, combined with Fed tightening, interest rate hikes, um, balance sheet reductions, et cetera. That's one whole vector and I wouldn't put any weight on a low unemployment rate. It ignores labor force participation rate, which is awful. You know, it's down around 62% versus 70% in the year 2000. But um, but beyond that, unemployment is a lagging indicator. Unemployment goes up after a recession begins. Employers are very reluctant to lay off employees. You got to pay severance. Um, you, it, it's expensive to recruit and hire them back and train them. So you, you, you pretty much wait until the recession has already started and you can, oh, gee, all right, I got to lay some people off. So it's not a leading indicator, it's a lagging indicator. So the Fed is behind the curve. Um, and then and then beyond all that, Adam, is the, the biggest, you know, the, the real, um, you know, 500 pound gorilla in the room, if you want to call it that, is um, there is a brewing global liquidity crisis, a global financial crisis. <coughs> Pardon me, that's, that's different from a recession. It's, uh, financial panics and recessions are two different things. They can come separately. In 1998, we had a financial panic, but there was no recession. In 1990, we had a recession, but there was no financial panic. In 2008, we had both. They, they can come together. It looks like they might be coming together again. This is revealed in uh, inverted yield curves. Um, uh, major dealers are bidding at auction for treasury bills. The Fed will give you treasury bills with a phone call. All you have to just call the Fed and do a reverse, reverse repo with the Fed. They'll give you some treasury bills. But the banks are bidding at auction for treasury bills that yields to maturity lower than what the Fed will give you for a phone call. Why would you do that? The answer is the Fed bills um, cannot be rehypothecated. They cannot be used as collateral, but the auction bills can. So what that tells you is there's a collateral shortage. That means deleveraging balance sheets. It means financial distress. And we also see it uh, not just in the treasury yield curve, which is inverted from uh, right now, um, six months to 10 years, but also the euro dollar futures curve, which is even more troubling. It's not unprecedented, but it is rare and it's not a good sign. But the Fed continues, you know, raising rates in, in the teeth of this really bad data. So I look for a severe recession in the U.S., um, really global, because you, you know, your question was, how's the global outlook? It's pretty bad. Um, maybe something closer to, you know, social unrest and riots in Europe. Um, and then on top of that, possibly a global financial liquidity crisis worse than 2008.